Okay guys, I'm making this video um, to help those who wants to fix a oil leak in their power steering system on a Volvo Penta 5.0. Um, I owe a lot to this forum here uh, where I've learned a lot from and that's the the whole truth boating forum uh, and then under this um, section here Volvo Penta steering ram overhaul and there's this guy on here which I give a lot of credit to um, C Ray 250 Martinique um, he shows in detail extensively how we are to replace a seal on this unit and now um, I've looked everywhere and cannot find a good video that will show how to replace a leaking seal uh, what we have here is a um, pump a steering pump um, that's right here and uh, the leak could be from there and then we have the oil cooler here and here is the actuator or steering ram um, and this video is specific, specifically talking about the leak coming from an o-ring right here so it's a, a very common leak right in there so if you see oil down here somewhere dripping um, that's uh, most likely that's the seal that's gone bad um, now Volvo dealer says that this whole unit needs to be replaced and, and that seal in there is not replaceable this whole unit just for the parts alone can cost anywhere from 600 to a thousand bucks uh, but if you can replace that seal, which they said is not replaceable, it will cost you less than ten dollars. And that's um, this whole unit is uh, five hundred or six hundred bucks, at least, um, just for the unit by itself, and not uh, counting the the labor involved. Anyhow, I'm making this video because I'm kind of upset with Volvo where they designed a unit that fails so often and uh, said that the seal is not replaceable. So let's get started here. Um, we have this unit here. It's the actuator for the steering um, column. And the leak again is on a seal um, right here where the shaft goes back and forth. The hardest part about this um, replacement um, is the taking off the cotter pins. There are four of them. One sits here, one at the bottom, down here somewhere. And then there is a cotter pin that goes here and one on the bottom unit here. Um, so those are fairly difficult to take off and then the other difficult part to um, take to put on would be the o-ring that goes in there and there's a trick to it and these guys on the forum has a, uh, a good diagram on showing how to do it anyways this is a crude video um, so it's nothing professional I just want to help the uh, people out so let's get started um, what I have is a 2005 four wind fun ship is a 19 footer and it's a Volvo Penta so first of all you want to see what uh, serial number you have on your unit so this would be mine right here that's three eight six two five one three and you can cross re reference that to other units uh, where the numbers might be different but it's for the the same unit 
Um, like I said, this is a crude video, so bear with me. I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down on this, but the uh, more thumbs down I get, the less likely people would watch this video and learn from it. So um, this is the... This is the where the water pump channels through and the uh, pump, the um, steering oil pump is back here. Well, not the pump, but the, the actuator is back here. So you would have to remove um, this whole unit, which is fairly easy. This diagram here shows a cotter pin right here, as you can see right there and then there's one at the bottom on the other side the bottom one is difficult to take off this is the actuator itself this is where the steering uh, cable goes in and this is the shaft that moves back and forth and uh, this is where the oil goes in and out and this is a battery where I find it easier if you just go ahead and take the battery off. Here's another picture of a cotter pin that's on top. It's always the bottom one that's difficult to take off. These are the rings, the O-rings. Um, so I'll get into more details about the O-ring in a minute. Um, so this is what the unit looks like when you take it off. And the leak that you're going to find would be right there. There's a seal right in there. And that's what you want to replace. In terms of the seal, you have to buy the right one. Because if you get the wrong one from... Uh, eBay like uh, I did they sent me the wrong one and they said it, it works but apparently it did not so the guy on the forums um, says that this is the right seal right right here 1624 5 that's 16 inner diameter 24 outer diameter and 5 is the thickness of it uh, it's a U seal is an oil seal and the place where you can get this from is o-ring and things there there's the info really nice people I believe they have a website too and you can get this seal for less than 10 bucks so back to the screen here the flickers um, these are just a couple of o-rings I, I replaced because it came in with the package from eBay um, the eBay seal was wrong and I installed it, got the oil leak, it was too small, so I had to redo the whole project. Very upsetting. Um, this is where the shaft goes through and these orange rings here, they're not really O-rings. I think they're just um, guides for the shaft to go in and out and uh, they need to be replaced. And that's what it looks like there. So this is the seal that was sent to me. Um, it's a 16 by 22 by 4. And that is too small. It would not work. They claim that uh, they sold thousands of these. Nobody returns them or has any problem with it. the next section of this video i will um video my brother um, taking the unit apart and putting it back together uh, replacing that seal uh, but before we do that again i just want to give credit to this guy here um, i thank him a lot for it I'm, I'm sorry i didn't have his permission to post uh, this segment right here but um, hope he doesn't mind So the process on how to put, in the, to put the seal on, I'll show that at the end of this video. There will be a segment just on that because it's fairly difficult to put on. 
here are additional images uh, from a workshop manual for the Volvo Penta. And this is the cylinder removal diagram showing the Here's another diagram. There's a cotter pin there and one down there. This image here there's show this image here shows the cotter pin right there and one on top. And again, the leak is right there. All right, tell me what you got going here. Well, um, I'm going to put this thing back on, and this is my rig. I just put in a vise, two blocks of wood, keep everything even. Okay, this goes back on. What you use to take that off? A little and wrench, and I just tap it. Little guy right here? Yeah. I just use that. Tap like it a this. little bit and give it that impact. Yeah, just tap it and it'll come off. Like that. Right. So this way I can put it on. Couple taps. That's it. difficult was it to take this off the boat? Uh, you have to take off the exhaust. We'll, we'll do a little segment when I put it back in. Um, it's not that hard. The cotter pins are the hard, hardest. Okay. Removing cotter pins. Mm. That's the only thing that's hard. Alright, what you doing now, sir? Uh, to tighten this cap, I just put that and that like that. These are one of these. Mm -hmm. Same way I took it off. It was the same way I'm putting it yeah. on. I guess the tip is a, I saw you tap it. Yeah, yeah, use a tapping. Don't just, yeah, tap it. Yeah. A little mallet, a little tap. And that's it. Okay. So, the next thing is to put the, um, what you call it back on here. Right. Okay, so I saw it Where's this come out of, sir? This came, the, this is the uh, steering actuator. Mm -hmm. Volvo Penta. Mm -hmm. Steering actuator, Volvo Penta. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Um, Cause it was leaking off this end. Mm -hmm. There's a rod that goes in now. Show me a rod, please. This rod goes in like this. Comes in from this side. Mm -hmm. What happens, there's a seal, there's a seal in here, and it gets brittle, and it'll start cracking, and then it'll start leaking right there, so you have to replace that seal. Is this a seal? The crack seal? Yeah. Right there? Alright, gotta replace Plus that seal. I, I cracked it a little bit taking it out, but it was very brittle and cracked. Alright, how'd you take it right out? I'll reassemble it and I'll show you how it goes back together. Right. This thing has some cracks in it. I'm just leaving it. I'm not even messing with it. Right here, I did some reading that said just leave it. Don't even mess with it. So all right, I'll I'll run it till it blows some more. Till it leaks. Let's go through like that. Okay. And then a little kit. Where did that little kit go? Oh yeah, it has these rings. Okay, from eBay. Yep. So I use the blue one. Inside that, inside that mm -hmm. ram, yeah. And there's a still picture of how I how I put that in. Then this thing goes in last right here. So put this in. Yeah, I guess the ridge is facing out, right? Yeah. The um, 
that ridge thing. That's how I took it off, so I guess that's how it goes on. So the brown seal there is in the um, seal on the outside. I guess it's just to stop the dust from getting inside, and that's not the one that's leaking. The one that's leaking it's inside. The second one behind that. We'll put this cap on right here. This is the, the cap. cap. Mm -hmm. It's got a mm -hmm. seal on there. You gonna replace that seal, sir? Might as well when you get it out. Yes, wasn't See. leaking. There you go. Take that out. Here's the other one. I don't think it was this one. Pretty thin. thin. So I'm matching thin. it up. I'm just gonna use the thin one. All right. This one's going on. Clean this groove off a little bit. New one on. Boom. That's it. Clean this end. That's it. That's how this rod comes out. Take this out. This rod shoots all the way out this way, and you pull out those seals. And then this end goes back on right here. Mm -hmm. And to tighten this back on, um, I'll show you when I reassemble it. Okay, so this next segment talks about the seals. Um, the original seal that comes out of the steering ram is this um, brown seal. It's an oil seal, and there are numbers on it, which um, which are these numbers here. So um, I don't know what it means. If you can find one that matches that, then that's that's perfect. Otherwise, go to a um, O-ring store and shop uh, an O-ring shop where they sell hydraulic supplies. Uh, parts and uh, see if they can find you one to match this. So the best way to do is just bring um, this old seal to the hydraulic shop or O-ring and things. Now the place where you would buy that, I already mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but here it is, O-ring and things. The seal that you want to use is the 16 by 24 by 5. Um, the one below that there um, is the one that the shop recommended for me uh, to match it up, but I didn't use that one. So this bottom one is the original. Um, the next blue one there is the one I bought from an eBay kit that's $50 and it's too small. Uh, it gave me a leak after I installed it and they gave me a refund on it. But keep in mind um, when you first bought it, it says no refund. So, And it has several seals in, uh, in the package, but this is the only one you really need right there. So for 50 bucks, that's what you're buying. Um, this next one here is the one that the that the the shop matched up for me which I think is um, not the right fit either and the last one I ended up using would be this guy here and that one is fits very tight gives a good seal very hard to put on so this video is all about how to put that on I used the seal from eBay. It was small and flexible. I was able to uh, wedge it in there like so, but um, don't use this uh, method because it will not work for the bigger seal. So I'm referring uh, to um, this segment of the discussion on the forum. Um, and
And that's the old actuator. Uh, the one that, that I have this is the exhaust and it needs to be taken out before you can get to the actuator and it's not difficult to take off at all this whole unit we just have to take out in order to get to the steering ram and it's fairly easy to take off And this is a little technique on how to take that uh, end cap off of the actuator. This is where the leak is and we're replacing the seal. There's one on the outside, one on the inside. The outside is the dust cover. The main one that we're replacing is the oil seal on the inside. And this shows the shaft. You don't want to scratch that up. That's why we use wood block uh, to clamp it down. Um, this here wiper seal is a seal on the outside to prevent dust from getting in. And then that rod seal there is the one we're replacing. There are different types of seals um, and they have double lip, single lip. I believe the one I'm using is just a single lip. This is the picture that shows how you should shape the seal before putting it on. So with that being said, you first tie the center like that. And he is saying that loop it twice. And then you're gonna bend the seal to one side like so continue bending the seal um, to make a double loop and you hold it in with a toothpick because it tends to um, reform to its original shape and you stick it into the rod like so so for my demonstration I am going to do this Pretend this is your um, your rod, uh, the, the, and you're gonna put this. This is your seal that you're gonna try to get it to fit in there. So what you wanna do is bend it like so. You use the string, um, um, some kind of a strong string. I use a kite string to tie it. So you'll tie it like so and then you're going to take this and you're going to continue bending it like so. So now you're reducing the size of this seal in half. It's going to tend to want to pop out like this. So he's saying that you put a toothpick or something, a rod or something right in there so it holds it in place. Okay, and then like so. Okay, so again, here, just push it over, put a toothpick in between there. So, the toothpick was too flimsy, did not work for me, so I ended up using a screwdriver instead of a toothpick. The hole there. Okay. So that's how it goes. You might need two people to do this because the seal is very tough to put in. This hole is very small. And after you put it in there like that, you would just have to find something, maybe a, a, a socket or something that will fit the hole and push the seal down. So you can imagine that this is a, a socket or something and then you, you push it down like so okay, to get it seat into the groove. Now, once the seal sits in there already, you would push your rod, your uh, rod through it, um, and that actuator rod goes in and out. It's going to be very tight to put it in, but uh, you just have to hammer it in or 
or wedge it in somehow and to create that way it creates a tight seal and uh, like I said it takes a couple of guys to do this so um, that's how you do it